Hey everybody and welcome to this quick take where I will tell you what a knowledge graph is in 10 minutes or less without using too much tech and too much jargon. So you may have heard a few things thrown around when talking about a knowledge graph. Sparkle and property graph and triple store and RDF and ontology and semantics. Oh my! You don't actually need to know any of those things to understand what a knowledge graph is. You also don't need to know any of those things to understand what a knowledge graph can be used for. So you may have heard some very sophisticated, very poetic ways of describing what a knowledge graph is. I put some of those down below in case you want to go and check them out. I also have a whole video of them over here. There's a little secret though, and I'll let you in on it. And that is all a knowledge graph is, is describing how one thing is related to another thing. Is it really that easy? What's all the hype? Why is this such a big deal? Well, traditionally, we all had to use a relational database where you had to have a table with what is one thing? How does it relate to something? You get one chance to do that. Then you have to make another table and another table and another table and another table to do all of those things. That's what a relational database does. Knowledge graph basically takes all of that information and makes it into a model so that the logic, the skips in logic that you have to make are already explicit. Yes. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of anxiety people have over what is a knowledge graph. If you just want to know what a knowledge graph is and understand why it is so useful, just keep that in mind. I hope that is one of the most simplistic ways that you will ever hear somebody describe a knowledge graph. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Oh, you're still here? It's over. Go home. Come on. Who needs to stick around? Just kidding. I guess you want more. That's okay. I like Knowledge Graph too. So for example, let's take a cheeseburger pizza. As people, we know that cheeseburgers are a form of hamburger. Hamburgers are made of beef and beef come from cattle. Those are animals. We know that as people because of our collective understanding. So to make those leaps in logic, a knowledge graph can do that as well because those leaps or hops can cost a lot of time and money if you're doing them in regular relational databases because each of these things have to be a separate query on their own. So let's see what that looks like in practice. Let's, for argument's sake, say that each query that we do is going to cost us $1 and each of the queries is also going to take five milliseconds to complete. Let's take a simple question. If I am a frozen pizza manufacturer and I needed to know which stores that I've shipped to have a specific kind of pizza. Let's take that as what we're trying to find out. To make that query, it would look like this. Now, first you'll see relational takes three different hops or queries to conduct. And that's going to cost us $3 and about 15 milliseconds to complete. Now, let's look at this from a graph perspective. You can see that you only need two different kinds of queries at this point to get to your answer. This one comes out to $2 and about 10 milliseconds to complete. So you might ask yourself, okay, Ashley, that's not that bad. You're right, it's not that bad, but this is a simple query. It's only when you get into more complex multi-hop that graph really shines. So let's take the scenario where you have a produce supplier and let's call them Acme uh, Produce. So Acme Produce tells you that ugh, their records aren't that good. They can't tell you which shipments that they had between March and April that may have contaminated lettuce. Oh no, now you need to find out which shipments that lettuce could be in and which pizzas, which you already shipped out to your customers, may have contaminants. This is a very common reason people use graph. So let's look at relational first. There you go. Okay, so let's take again for the sake of argument that 
the pizza is the central key to this database. So everything you have to do, you have to find the pizza first before you can get any other information. Let's also take, for example, that lettuce, which shows up as a very common ingredient, perhaps across all of the different pizzas that you make, is just a string and it's not an ID. That's another thing that Graph does. Everything is a thing, not a string. That means everything in a knowledge graph has an ID and it's not a string. So in this case, if somebody accidentally typed in lettuce incorrectly, you may actually miss something and you might have a lawsuit on your hands. All right, so for this one, it's gonna cost you about $24 to do all of these queries because again, you gotta do a query and another query and another query and do all of those joins. That is also going to take 120 milliseconds to be precise. Again, these are just for argument's sake. So you can see this is really complicated and you may actually miss something. Now let's look at graph. Wow, that's a little bit more simplistic. Now, remember, you have to set up your graph well ahead of time. It's kind of how you get to this point. But that said, if you have a well-structured graph, you can do this in two hops. Here, you could also probably cut it down to just one if your model is set up that the ID and the label are known to your index within the, the graph database because then it would know Acme and its ID without you having to look for it. Unlike relational, here we don't have to look up the pizza because pizza, lettuce, and the lot number are already connected based on how one thing is related to another thing. So you can skip over all that logic. You don't have to do a query for all of it. Here's the thing, unlike relational, a graph, you have some universal things like pizza, like lettuce. You don't have to necessarily look up the label and the ID for these things because those are already contained within those classes of things. The other thing is you don't even necessarily have to look up all of that information about the manufacturer, when they delivered something, when and if they had lettuce, because each of the suppliers is already connected to what they supply. So you know all the pizzas that are connected to lettuce. You also know that Acme delivered each of the lot numbers because you could have a relationship which is delivered by. You also have a range of those deliveries within the model. So instead of having to go through all of those search queries, all you have to do is construct this query. And my friends, that is the power of graph. And I really hope this was helpful. Believe me, cost and um, speed are not the only things graph gives you, although they are very easy to measure and to understand. Hence why it's in this video. And with that, I'll catch you next time.